What's up, guys? It's your boys, the So I Was Thinking Podcast, and we're back. We are back. Let's get it. Of course, <laughs> this episode would not be possible if not for Rabbit Hole Records. If you want to record a song, an album, your podcast, or your Pepsi commercial, don't call. Wait, I just confused myself. Felipe you, take over. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to record a refreshing Coke commercial, Chris is your man. By the way, I got a head start on this Coke today because I love it so much. <laughs> Sponsor wow. us. Anyway, oh. it's a running gag now on our show. I've been, uh, yeah, it's nice. I'm health conscious, and so I've been drinking this Coke slowly. It's diet. It's not diet. I don't drink <laughs> diet drinks. You know what they say, if you, like, eat a bunch of candy or sugar or whatever... You just wash it down with a diet yeah, drink to a balance diet it out. Yeah. yeah. Math. Quick, it's quick so math. Fun. Science. You just interrupt me. It's... Sorry. No, go on. No, it's fine. Whatever <laughs> you want. <laughs> so, today. What are we talking about today? Speaking of interrupting and stuff... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Today's topic is judgmental Christians. Got it. There's a lot of judgment coming nope. from this side of the room Be towards that side. Uh, <laughs> 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 but uh, this is a question that I, we've gotten a lot. Actually, it's popped up oh, yeah. in our Instagram DMs. It's popped up in conversations that we've had with people. Why are Christians so judgmental? Um, there's a lot going on. There's a lot that we need to discuss. There's a lot that. Um, we're excited to discuss, but definitely not cool for Christians to be judgmental. Yeah, stop it. There's a part of there's a part of uh, society that we need to address. We need to talk a little bit about the church and and uh, holding people accountable. But you know, like, uh, what does that look like? Why are Christians so judgmental? What do we do about it? How do we become less judgmental? Who are we judgmental towards? Why are we judgmental toward those people? Let's let's get right into it. Yeah. So I think what a lot of the judgment stems from is people thinking they're better than non-Christian people. Mm. I think, sorry, I'm still collecting my thoughts, but I think it comes from us holding the world to the, our same standard. And let me be clear, when I say that, I don't mean our standard is any better. I don't think we're any better, but that gets lost in translation. And I think that's where judgmental Christians come from. Because Christians can definitely be very snobby. And yep. They're like, oh, you're not a Christian? Hmm, what's it like going to hell? Like, yep. it can be really Bim. intense. And it doesn't make anybody feel good. And I think... Or I've heard a ton of stories of people being turned away from the church because of the judgment going on yep. in the Christian community. Yep. And so I think it all stems from us having some sen some idea somehow of being better or superior because we're, we think we're being held to a higher standard, which in some ways we are. But that's what we're talking about today. And how the Bible does not support that at all. Amen. Thank you, Felipe. Take the words right out of my mouth. Yep. Or I think I think it's I think you hit the nail right on the head that we are we as Christians are held to a standard. Um and we are not supposed to hold other people that don't follow Jesus to that same standard. If I I, I play basketball. Rowan does fencing. I do not judge Rowan's ability to play basketball, or I don't judge Rowan's fencing by basketball rules. If he takes two steps in fencing without flicking his foil, that's not a travel. You know what I'm saying? Like that's not. It's, we're not playing the same game. Mm -hmm. But if we're both playing basketball and he picks up the ball and takes two steps, it's a travel. You know, like, so that's that's Amen. kind of what we're talking about. Um, I think as Christians, too, it's important to know that we're made to be servants. Jesus led everybody in in servanthood. And he taught us that even though he was king of kings, he wasn't too big to, to serve. 
Um, you know, like if uh, one of my favorite things is if you're too big to serve, you're too small to lead. Um, and he didn't act like he was better than anybody else. Uh, you know, like Paul says, you know, like him regarding himself as nothing, stooped down to our level and, and became human and, and was a sacrifice for our sins by becoming less, by, by, by humbling himself. Yeah. Um, and so we're going to talk a little bit about that and what that looks like. First Corinthians Ooh, chapter 13, verse 1 and 3. Paul says this, If I speak in the tongues of men or of angels, but I do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains, but I do not have love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship, that I might boast, but I do not have love, I gain nothing. Wow. Big words. This is... uh, To the topic of judgmental Christians, this is what's wrong with being so judgmental. Because when you have that sense of judgment towards another person because of their flaws or because of their shortcomings it's no longer out of love there's a difference between pointing out a flaw in somebody because of love and pointing out a flaw in somebody because you think you're better than them because you're you think that oh i never sin or i don't sin in this area so i'm able to give critique it's one of the most infuriating things when people uh try to correct you on something and you're like look at yourself before you try to teach me something like don't tell me how to live my life like lead by example and that's what jesus did he led by example and he showed us that the standard that we raise ourselves or that we should raise ourselves to is to lower ourselves which is kind of counterintuitive so yeah like jesus king of all kings wash the feet of the disciples so what are we doing to wash the feet of the people around us yeah and for a lot of people that's giving them weird looks and making them feel bad yeah and again like if we are if we are to be like christ of the world the the crazy thing about jesus and i just read through the gospels uh, you know at the beginning of this year mm-hmm. and and reading through the gospels you you see that jesus picks a fight with people but jesus never picks a fight with sinners jesus never picks a fight with people that knew that they didn't have it all together. Mm. Jesus does pick a fight with people that think that they have it all together. Um, and, and these same people were the ones making God inaccessible to people. These same people were the ones making the law too difficult to follow. These people were the same people being super legalistic and super you know, rigid, but they were doing it for show. And Jesus has a problem with that. And Jesus was very judgmental towards them. And Jesus did show judgment to all of them. But to the people that knew that they had it, they didn't have it all figured out. Jesus was very kind and warm. And, and he brought them in close and he had dinner with them and he had parties with them and he did a lot with them. And at the end of the day, when their heart began to change and they decided that they wanted to follow him, he would then utter the words, go and sin no more. Yeah. There was tact. Yeah, we have a we have an episode about that, don't we? I feel like we do. I've definitely heard that before. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we have. But I think it's super important to like keep in mind what judgment even means cuz judgment can have this connotation of like oh, it's bad. Judgment can be good. Like if there's judgment from Felipe towards me, it's usually for good reason. And, like, maybe maybe don't call it judgment, but Felipe has definitely corrected me on stuff. Felipe has definitely told me, yo, what you're doing is stupid. Mm-hmm. Sorry for the language. No, no this has to be podcast. Oh, Now we got to put a bleep in there. No. Sorry for all the kids who are listening to this. I apologize. <laughs> This was a serious lapse in my judgment. <laughs> <laughs> Hurry up. <laughs> Hurry up. Oh, my apology messed me up. I forgot what I was going to say. Felipe has definitely ca- called you stupid. Oh, yeah. So, like, it's okay if a fellow Christian that you know well and who knows you well, like, brings something up and is like, hey, 
I see this in your life and this needs to change. Because at that point, that's more mentorship than it is judgment. Hmm. And I think it's important to identify that. Yeah. And and I think I think uh sometimes, you know, like if we if we going back to our Bible in context episode, Paul has a very interesting uh verse where he talks about how uh one day we as Christians will will help in judgment. So we are gonna be able to judge people's actions. And in in the context of what he's saying, he's talking about the end of times. He's talking about when God has won, when you know, like there's judgment being passed. So you you know, like either you're a Christian and you you did this and you receive your reward, or you didn't and you live life with sin and in rebellion towards God and this and you receive your you know reward for that. Mm-hmm. And and so like there there is a part where we talk about judgment, but that part is not now. And I think as as we we as Christians, I think, and let me say this because I'm going to put this in context too. I think there's a part of us that we know and we follow truth and we follow in, in the footsteps of Jesus. There is a bit of our calling to um, be the moral standard in some sense, right? So like at yeah. work, we're called to be honest. We're mm-hmm. called to fight for people. You know, like we're called to to fight for orphans and to fight for foster kids and to fight for um, life and to fight for whatever you want to, you know, like all the good moral things to fight for. Like, let's fight those fights. Yes. Do we get to pass judgment here and now? No, we yeah. don't. We get to be the moral standard, but we don't get to sit there and, and point fingers at everybody else that doesn't want to do the same things that we do. Um Interesting, interestingly enough, uh, Paul addresses it, you know, in Romans chapter two. Actually, let me put this in context first. It, it's not God's anger towards us that leads us to repentance, although that is very well and true. As a matter of fact, John the Baptist used to sit in the desert and look at people and preach, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And when he said repent, he meant turn from your ways, turn from your sinful living, turn from um, this life that you're living and, you know, and and turn from it because the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Um, But it's God's mercy mostly mm-hmm. that is like man i you know what are you it's like this realization man i do deserve this man i am not as great as i thought i was man my life is full of sin man i am broken whatever and god accepts me anyway yeah Romans chapter 2, verses 3 and 4. So when you, a mere human being, pass judgment on them and yet do the same things, do you think you will escape God's judgment? Or do you show show contempt for the riches of his kindness, forbearance, and patience, not realizing that God's kindness is intended to lead you to repentance? It's his kindness that leads us to repentance. It's not us being a bunch of angry Christians holding up signs, yelling at people and telling people that they suck and and that they're going to hell or whatever. That's not what leads anybody closer to Jesus. Mm. It's, it's God's kindness that leads us to repentance. Yeah. I love that. That's really good. And I like how it's kind of like Paul saying, check yourself before you, before you wreck yourself. (laughs) (laughs) But seriously, some people do need to like be like, all right, hold up. Yeah. You're doing the same exact thing. And it's okay like for two people to struggle with the same thing and then like work through it together. Like that can be an extremely great or what? That wasn't proper English. That can be a really good thing to be able to like work through a big issue with someone else. But if someone else is just like beating you down because of an issue you have and they're doing the exact same thing, it's going to yeah. discourage you even more. And I think there's so much wisdom in saying through kindness, forbearance and patience, like that's how you pass judgment. That's how you are able to be like, yo, I'm seeing this, this in you and I don't like it. Like check yourself, but also don't always do that because you're probably doing the same thing. Yeah. And uh, I think we in the church have forgotten what role we play. Like, we're supposed to represent Jesus. And and Jesus, right before he leaves, again, 
I've said this on the podcast before. I, I say it all the time. My some of my favorite passages in all of the Bible are the last few chapters of John, where jo, where Jesus is saying like his last farewell address. He's like, "I'm about to go to heaven. These are the most important things. I'm trying to get uh, all of this out to you, so that you people understand this and what's important." John chapter 18, verses 8 through 11, he says, when he, Jesus is Jesus talking, and he's talking about the Holy Spirit, he says, when the Holy Spirit comes, he will prove to the world to be in the wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment, about sin because they do not believe in me, about righteousness because I'm going to the Father mm -hmm. where you can see me no longer, and about judgment because the prince of this world, aka Satan, now stands condemned. It's the Holy Spirit that is going to convict people and, and, and prove to them that they're wrong. You know, like I've and and in the church, the Holy Spirit uses people that you are close to, uses people that know you well, uses people that you trust to be that accountability for you to, you know, to tell you what you're doing is wrong. Hey, you need to grow in this area. Hey, you need to leave this sin behind. Hey, this is how you grow for the world. Yeah. Completely different story. Yeah. And this is something I learned in youth group like a really long time ago but you can asking the, the holy spirit to kind of and it sounds scary but asking the holy spirit to condemn you is really important because uh, you need to know that you're wrong like a lot i know a lot of us think we're perfect and not everybody is except for me but sometimes you need a check and that's what the holy spirit is yeah like ask it takes a lot of humility to ask God condemn me. Like I've done a lot wrong. Like let me know what I've done wrong. Yeah. And it's not like this detached voice being like, you lied to your sister today. Like, but it's still, it takes a lot of humility and it takes you saying I was wrong and I need to fix stuff about my own life. And it's super important. Yeah. And it all goes back to that last verse about, like, you need to be absolutely sure that you're clear of, like, if you're passing judgment on someone else, you have to be absolutely clear that you're not making the same mistakes. Yep. Like, lead by example. And a great way to lead by example is asking the Holy Spirit, like, condemn me. Holy Spirit, what if I, like, what have I done wrong? What do you need me to change? Yep. Sculpt me. Yeah. And and that's important. But let's get let's get into a different topic because now this is a fun one. We talked about it in our Bible in context episode, oh, yeah. right? Uh so I think that there's been a bit of a, a a dangerous, dangerous mentality that I think has stunted a lot of Christians in their growth. And it's 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 from the old prophet Tupac and uh God rest his soul. Yep. On that island wherever he is. Yeah, in Cuba with uh, Castro. Uh, anyway. And Michael Jackson. And Michael Jackson. And Elvis. There's pictures. Anyway, uh, I'm kidding. Uh, but the great prophet Tupac said, only God can judge us. And for whatever reason, there's some Christians in the church. Now, listen, if you're listening to this podcast, you don't go to church, you don't believe in Jesus yet. This part, I just want you to give, give some context. But if you do go to church, if you're a Christian, if you... This part is for you, so listen up. The only God can judge us idea has infiltrated the church, and now we like to pretend that nobody can hold us accountable except for God. Mm. And I've seen so many people live that lie, like, you know what? Like, you're not God. You can't tell me what to do. This is how I read the Bible. This is how I do things. This is, you know, like, nobody ever told me this was wrong. Uh, my parents didn't tell me this was wrong. Uh, culture doesn't tell me that this is wrong, going back to our For the Culture episode. You know, like, this isn't wrong. I don't think it's wrong. I can lie if I want. I can, you know, like, sleep with my boyfriend, girlfriend before we're married because it's not wrong. Blah, blah, and only God can judge me. That's not in the Bible. Yep. Doesn't exist. Not in there. And that's that's a very sinful way of thinking. Because I forget what episode we talked about this. But we talked about it sometime. But sin isn't worshiping the devil. Hardly ever do we, when we sin, we're like, all hail Satan. Yeah. It's always, I'm right. This is my truth. Like, mm. I'm going to do things the way I want to do them. Yep. That's where sin shows up. Yep. And so by thinking 
this is how I interpret the Bible. God would act like how I'm acting in this situation. This is like, you can't judge me. That is a very sinful think- way of thinking because it turns the intention to you instead of to God. Yep. And, and, um, it's also this idea that like, listen, uh, we, like Rowan says, it's almost every episode and, and, you know, like I have people in my life too, that hold me accountable. Mm-hmm. This idea that only God can judge me is dumb. <laughs> and it's dumb because like, I'm, I, I'm being held again. If, if Rowan's playing fencing and I'm playing basketball, I'm not going to judge him according to to basketball rules, you yeah. know, like I'm not going to call a travel when he takes, again, I said this at the beginning of the episode. However, if we are both playing basketball, yeah. one of us has got to know the rules. Mm-hmm. Both of us have to be playing the same sport. And and we're if we're following Jesus, we have to be playing the same sport. We have to be on the same team. There There is no separate set of rules for us. Yeah. Um, and so if, 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 I'm doing something in my life that is wrong. Now, some somebody might say that this is stupid or whatever, but here's 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 um or, or silly or whatever, but like I take accountability in my life very seriously. For me. Yeah. I I think it's so important if you call me out on something and I I don't think I'm being prideful in saying this. Rowan can tell me or tell everybody if I'm lying or not. But like, if you tell me I'm doing something wrong, nine times out of 10, I'm going to look at you and I'm going to, I'm going to doubt myself. Yeah. I'm not going to say, no, you're wrong. I'm not doing anything wrong. Nine times out of 10, I'm going to look at myself and be like, well, am I doing something wrong? And I'm going to sit there and wrestle with it. I'm not going to immediately go on the offense and or get defensive and be like, no, how dare you, blah, 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 blah. Like, no, I'm going to consider that maybe I'm doing something wrong. Mm-hmm. Um, and and so much so that, like, I, I want to be held accountable. I want to look like Jesus. If I'm not looking like Jesus, somebody comment on my Instagram, somebody comment on So I Was Thinking podcast on anything— Tell me when I don't look like Jesus. Like, that is how much I value being held accountable. Yeah. Rowan knows the password to my phone, mainly because when we're in the car and we're driving or whatever, he picks his songs or whatever. But I've also told him, you know, like, you can look through my phone. If you, if you catch something in there that is, that is way off color, call me out on it. I shouldn't have anything in my phone anyway that he shouldn't look at. Now, he doesn't just sit there and look at my phone like he doesn't have any reason to. Mm-hmm. But, you know, like, same thing, you know, like when I was in a relationship. At any point in time, ask me to look at my phone. I don't, I don't have anything to hide. Yeah. You know, like, like this idea, like, why should we have something to hide? Um, and that's just accountability in one area of our lives. But like, you know, like if, if I'm, if you're scrolling through Spotify and you see that I'm listening to something inappropriate, Hey, Felipe, like, what are you listening to? Like, that's not building your, that's not building your character. It's not making you look more like Jesus. Like, are you sure you should be listening to this? If you, if you look at my YouTube search history or whatever, and you see something questionable, Felipe, are you sure you should be doing this? Like I am 100% open to you looking at my life and saying, Hey, Felipe, That does not look like Jesus. Why? Because my goal is to look like Jesus. Mm -hmm. You know, like the people that know me best, like look, you know, I, I, it's accountability. I want other Christians that are striving to know Jesus, that read their Bibles, that know what Jesus should be like, that know what Christians are supposed to live up to. I want them to look at my life and say, I don't think that's right. Yeah. And I think another big problem is, uh, a lot sometimes people tell us things and we don't like it and we get offended and so we just cancel them like mm. no you're wrong and you get your big group of friends and you're like everybody attack you yep. know cuz cancel culture has also infiltrated the church but we're going to talk about it we're going to talk about it cuz it's our podcast and you can't tell me no <laughs> but it's a big problem because the way i think about it if someone offends you or challenges the way you think Accept it. Like, to some extent, don't. Because some things people say are bad. But, like, if someone's like, yo, Christianity is stupid. Like, you you believe in fairy tales and all that. Like, be like, don't cancel them. 
be like, okay, let's have an actual discussion about this. Yep. Use your head. Like yep. Paul talks about all the time, like, use your head. Don't just go around willy-nilly. That's why you should read your Bible. That's why you should go out and search all over YouTube and the internets for information about the Bible. And you should like dedicate yourself to knowing what it says so that when the time arises... You know you're gonna know what you you're you bleh, can't speak. You're gonna know what you're talking about, and yeah. you're gonna be able to defend and represent God and Jesus well. Yeah, yeah. Um, and let's let's look at this verse too. So to bring context, this is a letter that Paul is writing to the church in Corinth, and he is bringing correction. There's some issues happening, and Paul is like, "All right, listen, we need to address." This issue and the issue is sexual immorality, but we're going to tie this back in together. First Corinthians five, chapter five, verses eleven through thirteen. He says this, but I'm writing to you that you must not associate with anybody who claims to be a brother or sister. That means they're claiming to be Christians, but is sexually immoral or greedy or an idolater or a slanderer or a drunkard or a swindler. Do not even eat with such people. And Paul is talking about the church. It says, what business it what business is it of mine to judge those outside the church? Are you not to judge those inside? God will judge those outside, expel the wicked person from among you. Paul calls the church of Corinth in his letter to the Corinthians to hold each other accountable. Yeah. If you are living in sin. I need to call you out. Yeah. But Paul does not like notice that he says who, anyone who claims to be a brother or sister. That means everybody outside the church, treat them like normal. Yeah. Now, if you're in a relationship with somebody and like, you know, like there's just some things that are that are morally wrong, right? So like, even if I don't know you, if I see you, you know, like pushing somebody out of a wheelchair. That's wrong. Oh. Regardless of our faith, I should be like, yo, maybe you shouldn't do that. You know, like, let's let's get this person back up on the wheelchair. Or, you know, like, if you're, st if I, you know, God forbid you're in some place where somebody, like, pulls a robbery or something, and it's like, yo, <coughs> if you, hopefully if you can, like, you can, you can stand up or do something. I don't know. But, like, there are some situations where it's not about Christian or not. It's about being morally right. And you should probably take a stance right yeah. and and then you should be different but for as far as everything else like yo hang talk to people talk to people love people i you know like the the cool thing is that i've you know like i've had three or four different jobs in the past two years i love all of my coworkers. do we agree on everything no are we all christians no do we all follow jesus no but that does not change how I treat them. That does yeah. not change how I talk to them. It does not change how I hang out with them because that's not my job. You know, like I don't, mm -hmm. I don't, I don't yell at them for the things that they do. That's different than me because we don't believe the same things. Yeah, we don't. But that, but does that stop me from loving them? Absolutely not. Yeah, and it all go. It, this comes full circle because at the beginning of the episode, we were talking about holding people outside of the church accountable. And this is oh, man, something. This is what it all means, right? So like, ah, oh, dang, I'm losing it. So, yeah. What were you talking about before this? Let me get back on track. The people that I work with, I love them. Like, I don't hold them to the same standard. I don't, I, you don't treat them any different because they believe different than you. Yeah, so like, I forget what I said at the beginning of the episode, but it was something along the lines of like, oh yeah, what does like what does judgment mean outside of the church? And it's like, inside the church, it's more accountability than anything. Like, inside of it, it's like making sure your brothers and sisters in Christ stay on track. <laughs> Sorry, I just can't say that normally. <laughs> <laughs> But making right. sure people stay on track. But outside, you're not higher than anybody. 
being held to the higher standard is not you're above everybody, like outside of the church. It's, you know what? I'm going to be your buddy. I'm going to be nice to you. Yeah. I'm not going to treat you like you're trash. Yeah. That's that's what holding yourself to a higher standard means. Is exactly. Not, you're not better than people. You're supposed to just meet people where they're at. Exactly. But, and I, and I, you know, like I have this conversation all the time. If you are a Christian, if you claim to be playing basketball with me and you start traveling, I'm going to call you for that travel. If you foul somebody while they're taking a shot, I'm going to call that foul. If we're playing basketball. Now, if... Again, if I we're playing, I'm playing basketball, and you're playing ping pong, bro. I can't call you. I can't call a travel in ping pong. I mean, you could. You'd sound. Stupid, I'd be wrong. But you exactly. Could. I'm not gonna call a handball in soccer. You know, like or I, I, you can't call a handball in soccer. But <laughs> if I'm playing basketball, somebody's playing soccer. If I call a handball, or and, and somebody playing soccer calls a handball on me, that'd be silly because. The, sport of basketball requires you to touch the ball with your hands whereas in soccer you got to keep the ball on your feet you know what i'm saying but like really? if if you claim to be on the same team you got to play by the same rules and you got to hold each other accountable to the same rules mm-hmm. yeah that's good that oh, was football but same difference what football with your feet soccer yeah basketball volleyball yeah <laughs> <laughs> Volleyball is the one you play with your feet, right? No, I think that's handball. Ah, makes sense. Cricket. Got it. Hello, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for all of our British listeners. Oh, for that terrible accent? That wasn't a terrible accent. We should do an episode just, just in accents. Oh, God. Oh, good eye, mate. This is the So I Was Thinking podcast from the land down under. Yeah, I can just do this accent. This is the. You're Rowan. You exactly. can do Rowan. I'm really bad at accents. <laughs> I cannot do them intentionally. I just accidentally do them. <laughs> <laughs> we should have. Listen, we're gonna put a blooper reel together, maybe some point, sometime. And one of the we're just gonna have so a I'll segment where Rowan. Show. Where Rowan just does accents. We're going to pick some accents and Rowan's going to do his best version of those accents. Yo, I'm Russian. I like oh, vodka. Yeah. <laughs> that was Russian. To all of our Russian viewers. I hope you can feel. They're offended. <laughs> That's what they are. <laughs> oh, God. Speaking of cancel culture. Yeah, they're about to cancel you, and you don't want the Russians canceling you. Anyway. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Great episode. Yeah, yeah. I think that's it. Love people. Stop being weird. Love people. And hold each other accountable. Love. Don't hate. Chase your dreams. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. Okay. (laughs) Alright, hope you guys have a great week. Two weeks, because... Or bi weekly. Yep. Um, peace. Yes, I don't know. Like, share, <laughs> subscribe. Follow us on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. Subscribe. Send us to your friends. Okay. Yeah. Bye. Get us some Coke. 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 Chris.